I'm Sean Green and welcome to this edition of the Songs We Sign. The singing of Christian hymns was an integral part of our Barbadian school life. In this episode, we will revisit and examine some of those songs we sang during our morning assemblies in primary and secondary schools. Now, back then, there were primarily two books from which we sang. Um, back in the days, we sang from the hymns ancient and modern, and sometimes we would also sing from the songs of praise. Well, I remember using hymns ancient and modern, very thick book, hard cover, many pages in there. And then there was the blue one, the songs of praise. Those were the two popular ones that were used back in my day. We used the songs of praise. At, at secondary school, that would have been. I went into Robert Secondary, but I left Louis Lynch. And, because at that time it transitioned in the name. And we did sing a lot of songs up to the songs of praise. In our time it was Red and White, Little Red and White, but became Zanger and Modern. I think along with that there was a, a blue book, more songs, and thank you, songs of praise, right? Actually, um, we did a whole range of hymns from the ancient to modern. I, I find now, I don't really see those books. You don't really get those books. And I find many schools have actually introduced their own um, hymn book or hymnal. I know we have our own at the school where I teach. We have a hymnal which consists of some of those songs and some of the other songs. In terms of looking at those hymns that would have been sung at very early at prayers in secondary school, what you can't attribute that practice to is the very religious nature of our society. And I believe that is basically molding students to be moral, responsible individuals. I, I do believe that is the intention behind that particular practice. Learning hymns and learning songs is a form of education. It's what develops upon that, so you, you don't learn the most complex hymns in primary school, but when you get secondary school, now we will prepare for that. So our educational system is, was that type of learning is, is based on a lot of Western European um, English. We have teaching music, and it prepared you after that hymn stage now to go on to, to deal with more complex forms, like symphonic forms. And they can be so beautiful, especially because they're so, for lack of better terms, basic in tune. You can do so much more with it. You can change it up. You can do this verse this way and change up another verse in another way. Like There's so much beauty in singing hymns. Okay, when a hymn writer writes a hymn, um, the lyrics, sometimes they have a melody in mind, as in one that they've composed themselves, or they envision it with a hymn that, a tune that's already existing, right? Um, and they put the song up there for the congregation to sing. Sometimes the congregation may like the words of the hymn, but not the tune. Somebody say, well, that tune is not too familiar, I don't like it, it fits better with this tune, or I can write a better tune than that, and it sounds sweeter with this tune. Um, an example would be, um, you know that song? Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light. The American version that I don't have in front of me, that I don't have right now, because this is an English hymn book. Um, oh, 
little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. So persons, English churches, churches that follow English tradition or like that Mel, they were gonna they're gonna go with O oh, little town of Bethlehem. All the American churches, anything that comes from America, they sing O oh, little town of Bethlehem. So you can have a hymn with more than one tune. For me, um, hymns are very special. My grandmother, she sang in a choir. So she sang a lot. And that's how I kind of learned the art of hearing somebody sing something and learning it quickly. I would hear her humming and I would learn the song quickly. And I think that's why I love singing up to this day. But I find that the hymns are so beautiful and sometimes, when, depending on your mood or what you're going through, you could always find a hymn that fits that slot that really encourages you. So I love hymns. Yeah, and for me, it was more, it was more regular for me because the church that I grew up in and I still attend, Darrell's Road, hymns are a common thing in our service. So it's more from our, my Sundays that hymns have really impacted me. Just something about the melodies, and the beauty in one hymn, one hymn tune could carry for so much songs. Just once, the words fit. <laughs> yeah. We can sing it. <laughs> so I think that's that's a nice, that's a nice beauty. Less things to have to learn, <laughs> definitely. You can have a tune that is shared by many hymns, like "Be Thou My Vision" and "Lord of All Hopefulness, Lord of All Joy." We used to sing that a lot at St. Michael's. Actually, I still remember the number, hymn 565 in the Songs of Praise. Yeah, it was a favorite. This was guaranteed to have everybody singing at school. And be thou my vision. Same melody, same melody. So, tunes can be shared across many hymns. It depends on the, what, what do people like, what do people remember, what, what they want, really. And that's true for many of us here in Barbados and the region who have married traditional hymns with Caribbean rhythms. <laughs> Many of us who attended school prior to the 2000s, those rhythmic Caribbean adaptations were practically non-existent for us in schools. We had to sing the songs in their purest traditional forms, like this one example from the Songs of Praise. Be thou my guardian and my guide. You know what? I'll let Lucretia Hall sing the rest. Oh, oh. 
thank you, Lucretia. Now, many Barbadians from various eras, from different schools, sang different hymns. Can you recall any of those songs you sang from school? Do no sinful action, speak no angry words. We belong to Jesus, children of the Lord. And another one was, um, new every morning is the love, awakening and uprising proof. And Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. They, they know there's seasonal ones, like there's a green hill far away. In primary school, there was a lot of all things bright and beautiful. That was a favorite. That was a well-known one. Some, some Christmas ones as well, too. Heart the Herald Angels sing all those type of joy to the world. I could remember hymns like um, Fair Wave the Golden Corn, um, Be Thou My Guardian and My Guide. Those were the hymns. And you had to learn them by heart. I remember especially Morning Has Broken and Immortal Invisible. Those were two popular ones at Morning Assembly. Um, through all the changing scenes of life, um, Jesus, I have promised, lead us Heavenly Father. Um, morning Has Broken, we used to just, they used to say, I was shocked that my peers used to say, especially boys, they sang. You didn't have to force them at assembly. So it was it was a joy. Primary school gave you those nice, you know, songs like All Things Bright and Beautiful, Jesus Wants Me for a Sunbeam. Okay, if we're talking about from as young as possible, it'll be at Erdison Primary School. And I actually remember singing Lead Us Heavenly Father Lead Us. It was actually one of the first hymns that I had to learn all the verses, but you can't ask me to recite it now. <laughs> Probably there, there is a green hill far away. Um, uh, morning has broken. I'm not sure if that's really a hymn per se, but morning has broken. Uh, of course, the, the, some of the really traditional ones that a lot of us know great is thy faithfulness. Most of the time, we would have sung nursery rhymes. Um, in terms of church songs, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus Loves is a bubbling over. Those type of songs we would have sung at the primary school level. Going on to secondary school, some of the ones that I could remember, Oh Jesus I Have Promise, Love Divine, All Love to Excelling, um, This Is My Father's Word, As the Deer Pants for the Water, Give Thanks, and on special occasions, maybe Ash Wednesday, 40 Days, 40 Nights, and lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Um, things like, oh God, our help in ages past, um, around independence and stuff, it'll be, I vow to thee, my country. I would say for primary school, my favorite song was, um, There is a Green Hill Far Away. I found that at primary schools in those times, Lent was, you really got into Lent and you kind of um, had an idea of what Jesus would go through, what he went through. And that followed me through to my secondary school because I went to St. Ursula's and it was the same thing. Lent was always strange enough. I love singing the Lenten songs. Oh, at Charles F. Broome, the principal at the time, Mrs. Carrington. I believe she led us through, lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us every single morning, Monday and Friday prayers. I, for a period of time, I genuinely thought it was our school song. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the one that really stuck with me. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. For special occasions, then we would mix in some others, but definitely lead us. When I actually transitioned to secondary school at Queen's College, um, I do remember there was one particular song we sang all the time, or tried to sing <laughs> all the time, and that was Thou Who's Almighty Word. To be the who's almighty word and the remainder of the lyrics and then when we got to the end it was let there be light and the entire school would basically be in unison singing let there be light so it'd be a couple people including myself singing the actual lyrics and then when it got to the let there be light everybody just came in like a big choir let there be light but i could not sing so we're gonna start there so there's no one thing that is a favorite to me at all, but I guess around independence time that I vow to be my country because, you know, Barbados tends to get very patriotic around that time, not any other time. So that um, very much sticks out to me. 
to be a pilgrim. That is the song. That is the common mirror. <laughs> Sorry, that is the common mirror. <laughs> the unofficial hymn. So yeah, every you know you sang that lustily at you know school prayers or any kind of common mirror celebration. So that always sticks out in my mind. Um, the To Be A Pilgrim was very similar to the Thou Who's Almighty Word. Basically, everyone just came in in unison at the To Be A Pilgrim. So that was basically it. Um, this was a big song at Wesley Hall because um, this is one of the big songs that we had, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, um, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Ways, and To Be a Pilgrim. I'm going to get to To Be a Pilgrim in a minute, but this song, it was somewhat like a, a rite of passage. The last verse had a, a descant. And all the boys in fourth year, class four, sang the descant. So you are kind of looking forward to sing the descant when you get in class four. So stand up, stand up. You, you know it's going to be nice and rousing. But the chorus, I am not even going to pretend to play it. I'm going to try and sing it. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Da, 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 de, de. De stay the noise of battle. Da, 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 da. So you just have this wi this wave of sound coming at you from the back of the hall, straight forward, and you in class one like. Well, you want to do that there too, <laughs> right? So, I mean, that and that song is based on the on the on the last message that this preacher gave: um, stand up, stand up for Jesus. He's going to be there for you. Don't. So, there's that. There's also, um, ooh, there's so many songs that are based on the stories and the experiences of people. Oh, that's also along the lines of um, to be a pilgrim, uh, how we used to sing it at school. Um, along the same lines, don't ask me to play it. Then you had again that same song from the back of the hall come forward because it's a high part. There's no discouragement. And then everybody, because this was the easy part, and this part is kind of repeated. His verse about intent to be a pilgrim. So everybody's gonna sing to be a pilgrim. And that was one of the cool songs to sing because, again, the boys in the back, the big boys, can show off that they can get this high part thing. Boom! And then everybody's just going to join in to be a pilgrim. It was actually pretty cool to be a part of that. Yeah. One must remember that these hymns were written by different people at various stations in life. And according to Holford, even some of these hymns had to be censored. Basically, there are the ancient and modern hymn book, the Songs of Praise, they went through a period where they actually looked at a number of hymns that had offending verses. And the verse where it talked about the rich man, his castle, the poor man, his gate, um, God made them high and lowly and coordinated their estate. Yeah, 
basically we, we went through it and they said that that verse really seemed to encourage persons to think that you're not really to go beyond your station if you are a poor person don't try to be be more than that if you're rich well you're rich if you're poor you're poor that's it and that's just one there's another hymn i can't remember the words i can't remember the hymn but the from what i understand the hymn was written by uh, a sliver who was thanking god for a very bounteous um, so that was also removed from the hymn book as well so if you check most modern hymn books they're not going to have that hymn they're not going to have that verse in that hymn um, all things bright and beautiful this is not quite this is a songs of praise with music um they're not in print anymore and i was looking for that verse that you told me it's not in here so this may have came out after some revisions and stuff like that but oh that verse is gone and rightly so hofer gives us another example of the inspiration behind another well-known hymn the spiritual songs and hymns that we use today basically tend to focus on the experience or the beliefs of the hymn writer. For example, um, you ever sang Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus? That hymn was based on the words of a preacher. He was a dynamic preacher and he made the statement that basically he has lived his life well and he could go to heaven tomorrow and this, that and so on. And unfortunately, he got in a terrible accident at the factory and his legs got mangled. So. They saved him, at least for the time being, carried him home and took care of him, but it was clear he was going to pass away. They asked him if he had any final words, and he said, I want you to stand up for Jesus. It's always I'm a history buff, so it's always good to know the have some of the information behind this song, how it comes, how it came about. Even for normal secular songs, sometimes I would search to find out what the writer was thinking about when they penned it. So I think it would be good, not necessarily when you're young, but maybe when you get probably in when you're in secondary school, it'd be good to have an idea behind it to know why why the song came about in the first place. You think so? I, I, I agree. I think. It's always important to know the meaning behind stuff that you're doing. Now, these are just a few of the songs we sang at school, including this one that we sang usually around November. I vote to the country. You know, this is one of the songs that we used to hear around Independence Time. Yeah, It was written by Gustav Holtz. And I only found out oh, I was listening to... The Planets is written by Gustav Holtz, and as I was listening to, he wrote a suite for each planet. And I was lying down just there listening to Jupiter, and I heard in the middle of it. And I, like, that's, I vote to be the country. I didn't even know that. Wow, that's that's so cool. So when I came and I looked at it, that's I yeah right there, Gustav Holtz. I don't know if we can still. Can we, are we, do we still sing it now that we're Republic? <laughs> that's, inter that's an interesting yeah. question though. Yeah. Are we still singing? Okay, well, yeah, I loved it. When, we, when I heard we went Republic, I was like, shoot, I don't think we could sing I Vote well, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, cool. <laughs> yes, Danielle, we can still sing it. As uh, Kia Sherlin is about to do to bring an end to this program and the series. I'm Sean Green. 
thank you so much for viewing. Shining